Hey, welcome. Hello there, fellow makers. Bill here, and it's time for Prop Live Q&A, your weekly prop and costume making question and answer session. This week we have a guest, a very special guest. Uh, not only an awesome cosplayer, but the first place winner of this year's BlizzCon costume contest, Laura, a.k.a. Casplay. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> you and your amazing hogger hanging out yeah. over your shoulder there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, you definitely nailed that sort of crazed, wild-eyed look that hogger has. Thank you very much. <laughs> Definitely what I was going for. Like, I have so much fun with the expression and the eyes especially. Yeah, well, you killed it. Uh, and the judges at BlizzCon agreed. Um, <laughs> I don't know about you guys at home, but I played a lot of World of Warcraft. I played on the Alliance side, and I rolled a lot of new characters in Elwyn, Elwyn Forest, is it called? That's so right. So I did the Hogger quest many times. And, uh, and I think I think I've participated in a couple of uh, level one gnome hogger raids as well. <laughs> oh, awesome! <laughs> yeah. So uh, Brittany and I were watching as you were building that on the leading up to BlizzCon with much anticipation. Very excited. Oh, thanks. And unfortunately, we didn't actually see it at BlizzCon. Somehow, we missed you. <laughs> right. Seems like I miss you every year. Yeah. Someday. Someday we will. But. Uh, if you guys are very interested, and you should be, in checking out what Laura's up to, um, you can head on over to Facebook and look up Kaz Play. Boop. I got it up on the screen here. Um, what uh, what have you been working on these days? Well, I've just kind of been um, hanging out since BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, right as soon as I got home from BlizzCon, I got laid off my job. No. And and so kind of like high and then immediately low. <laughs> Anyways, so I've been kind of running around trying to do some freelance to get up some cash for Christmas time, but mostly hanging out. Mm -hmm. I am doing a cool project, um, Cosplay Supplies. They sent me a cool material called Veriform, and they sent it to me and said, please build a head out of this and make a tutorial. So I'm like, okay, I'm okay. working on that. I'll be building a female worgen. That's awesome. Now, will that be a video? It won't be a video, oh. but it'll be like a, a blog tutorial. Okay. With eight pictures. That's fair. If you guys want to see videos, though, Laura's got a bunch of those on her YouTube channel. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. <laughs> Trying to make the segue work. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a whole bunch of videos there so far, like a whole bunch on how I built Hogger specifically. Yep. Like through my concept and design to building the legs, building the neck, uh, weathering the fur. I have many more plans. Uh, I just am working on getting time to, to produce them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it turns out cutting together a video takes an awful long time. It sure does. <laughs> That is fantastic. I love being able to check this stuff out, too, because quite a lot of clever engineering had to go into making Hogger work. I've got the video up now where you're just showing off how the legs kind of work. And right. uh, and there's it's, it's amazing to see it because you look like you still have quite a bit of range of motion. Like, you looked pretty mobile when you were running around on stage. Yeah, and that was one of my major goals with this build was I wanted it to be really flexible, really have a lot of movement in life. Like, mm -hmm. um, even though you can see my legs, my actual legs, I wanted the performance of the character to, to trump that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, to, people wouldn't notice my leg as, if I was moving around super in character. So Definitely. Um, I can tell you, too, we were watching the, the, the costume contest, um, especially with like a, a like a dark backdrop like that, you don't see the your legs at all. Um, right, and this, were, the stage was awesome. Right, and you were so animated and, and fun and in character that it, it just read so so well. That's fantastic. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, so everyone watching right now, look up Casplay videos on YouTube. Go subscribe and then go watch all of the videos, especially all the Hogger ones because they're great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what else do we have here? Oh, you have a whole album on, on Facebook on that build. And you've got a shop as well. What are you doing over on Etsy? 
Um, I have a few things on Etsy, um, like some resin casts of things. I have a tutorial on how I did um, the eyes on my last, not last year, was last year, my gray mane build. Mm -hmm. I built Ken gray mane and I built some really cool monster eyes and developed a interesting technique for that. So I sell kits for if you want to make your own monster eyes and I have a tutorial to go with that on my YouTube. Perfect. Um, I also sell casts of like claws, the same claws I used on Hogger and on Gen. Um, so yeah, I, I plan to add many more things there. Very good, very good. We'll be keeping an eye on that for sure. Um, let me see, what else do we have on the notes here? Uh, oh yeah, Brittany linked to the eye making video. So. Very good. All of those things will be listed in the show notes. Oh, I got to show the, the video of the eye because it looks awesome. That is really cool. It's got that like dimensionality to it when you as you rotate around the eye. It's not just a flat thing painted on the front of a dome. Right. Cool. And, and I wanted it to have like a really intense focus. Mm -hmm. Like some costume eyes you see, they have that illusion that, that follows you. Mm-hmm. But then it's the it's the viewer that controls where the vision is instead of the performer. So I yeah. wanted to control where the gaze was and have like that really intense stare. So that's why I developed that method. That's that is great. Awesome. Well, if I need to do a creature thing with eyes, I know who I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very cool. Well, before we dive in and start grabbing questions from the chat, which by the way, if you guys are live. Head on over to punishprops.com slash live and submit your questions through the forum there. Anything you want to know about, anything that me or Laura have built or are currently working on, uh, send a question out over there. If you have a uh, thing you're working on and you want uh, some advice, then let us know. We'll help you out. Uh, before we do that, though, I would like to jump on over to the Prop Tart page making this a new regular thing. We go to the prop chart page and see what everyone's up to. See if there's some cool things going on recently. So we head over there. Uh, if you're not in the prop chart group on Facebook, you should join. It's just the best group of makers ever. We've got someone working on a new ghost from Destiny. I can get behind that. Uh, let's see, I don't know what that is. That looks like the mask from the movie, The Mask. <laughs> um what else do we have here there there we go that's the new the new ghost from i wanted to make that someone already made it so great i don't have to make it <laughs> <laughs> we got joseph here talking about advice for shipping big props um uh everyone else is chiming in and helping him out lots of great stuff in there and uh we'll see lots of other fun uh of our maker friends jumping in and helping out like uh, harrison sometimes will jump in and, and help I saw my buddy Dan, a.k.a. Danquish, posting stuff the other day. Um, really awesome stuff. So, good on you, Prop Tarts. Keep it up. You guys are great. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, uh, I want to thank you. Thank, I don't know if she's in the chat or not, but Paige, our uh, employee. I believe her title is the Impossibility Coordinatrix. <laughs> we let the chat name her, or name her title. Anyway, Paige has been busting her butt to get guests scheduled for this show for the foreseeable future. So you guys watching live get the benefit of having regular guests uh, instead of just my goofy face uh, every week. So thanks, Paige. Keep up the great work. I don't know if she's watching, but that's fine. <laughs> um, I think that's about it. Are you ready to dive in and start taking some questions? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Awesome. This is a good one. Brittany, my wife Brittany, had to jump in and ask, do you have any pets and what are their names? Yes, I have a German Shepherd and a Husky. The German Shepherd's name is Nico and the Husky's name is Sasha. Are they're they... both about eight years old now, okay. but they're really good dogs. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, we still just have the two cats. If anyone is a fan of Buddha Cat, which by the way, I just double checked. We made a Twitter account for our cat, and he has more followers than my twin brother, so. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to remind him of that. <laughs> my cat has more followers than him. Uh, Brittany is in the chat, though. She's very excited to hear about your dogs. Yeah, like um, my German Shepherd actually made an appearance in my leg video. Yeah. 
in the leg part one. See, like I now I need to go see that. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's about three quarters of the way in on <laughs> leg part one. Um, yeah, I just look closely at his uh, back leg and the tendon. Oh. You and used him as a reference, an anatomy reference. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, look at this. <laughs> Here we go. I got the video up on screen. And there. Now, this is the German Shepherd. What was his name? Nico. Nico. It's short for Nicholas. What a great helper. He's yeah. actually helpful. Not like when our cats are on video and we're like, it's a helper <laughs> with air quotes. <laughs> yeah. He is like he was great reference during the whole hogger build. Anytime I build anything vaguely canine, mm -hmm. like I love like looking at him, and he's so good to just sit there and let me take pictures or he poke is. in his ears and stuff. Yeah, what a great dog! That's awesome. My cat is not so cooperative. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the question, Brittany. Uh, let's move on. Starting to get some questions rolling in here again. If you're live, you're watching live. PunishProps.com slash live. Send in your questions. Next one comes from Michael. Uh, let's see. You got so much detail on Hogger's face. How did you do that? I've seen a lot of costumes and fursuits, and this is just incredible. Well, okay. So I, I did a lot of things on this one. I actually used a lot of creature cast rubber on it. Ooh. And Bill, I learned about that from you. And I... Uh, did it that that's how I was able to fabricate these awesome lips uh -huh. and also gums. Um, I just dipped, dipped, uh, I ripped up cotton balls mm -hmm. and dipped in just like the old uh, latex and cotton method, yeah. just using the, the neoprene. I also spent probably two days just sculpting his nose. Yeah. Um, I sculpted that on the train to work and stuff. <laughs> but, but I, I would just like sculpt it and it'd be like, there isn't enough detail here. So I'd work on it a few more hours. And I'm like, uh, I'll put it away for an hour or two, come back to it. There's not enough detail here. I need to go more and more and more. Um, with Hogger, I, I couldn't get precious about anything. Mm -hmm. I knew it was going to be like a wild looking, crazy, dirty dog thing. So I didn't get precious about anything. And um, when I started being like, oh, I don't want to go too far. I'll mess this up. I'm like, if I'm saying that to myself, I need to go farther. So I would just like do it, like mm -hmm. dig that gouge in there. Cool. Uh, what, now, what did you sculpt it out of? I sculpted it out of monster clay. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite clays to use. Um, and then I made a plaster mold of it so I could cast the creature cast in it. His mm -hmm. nose is also creature cast. Yeah. Was that uh, and then just slip cast, right, for the with the creature cast? Yep. Yeah, fantastic. I uh, actually had the opportunity. The guy Mark that does creature cast is in Portland, and he oh. he got into it for uh, mask making, and mm -hmm. he did the same thing. He would sculpt the, uh, something. I think probably out of monster clay or something similar. Make a plaster mold, but his masks are like full on bowls. They're just half face, like they cover just the oh, front yeah. half of your face. So he just, he has a five gallon jug of it and a lever that yep. just goes glug, 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 fills it up. <laughs> yep. That's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Um, and then with the, uh, with the nose, so that's creature cast. So you were able to just paint that with just acrylics, right? Just right on yep. top of there. Yeah. Yep. Another big plus in the uh, creature cast column or in the, in the pros for the creature cast column yeah that's that's why i wanted to use that material i didn't want to mess with the rubber cement paint yeah stuff. yeah um so yeah lot, lots of creature casts on him and just like pushing that detail just getting in there lots of airbrushing mm -hmm. lots of time now his eyes are what'd you do for the eyes the eyes they're similar kind of similar to how i did the creature eyes in gray mane um, I used a little bit smaller diameter ball for it. Mm -hmm. I basically yeah. sculpted a golf ball size ball and put a little dip in it and poked a hole in it. So it has like a little concave place for the iris and a little hole for the pupil. And I just cast those out of resin. They were, um, I, I slush cast each eyeball so mm -hmm. that it would be lighter. Light uh, Weight was a critical factor on this yeah. one. So you can kind of see how it, 
has that dimensionality. And then I just put it in a, a globe ornament, just like my other eyes, oh, okay. to finish it off. So it's really light. That's it's cool. Really easy. And then, so you basically you know what size the globe ornament's going to be, and you you design the the eye to fit right inside of that. Yep, that's yeah. right. Um, for those and and there's a video on the the neck portion of it. I just want to point out again because I think this is super clever. The um, the way that Hogger's head works is your arm, one of your arms actually holds the head up, or yes. or, or, or puppets the head, I should say. Yes, that's right. Yeah, um, and what I what I have up on screen right now is uh, well, it's a very flattering video of you uh, scratching your butt. Uh, <laughs> but this all mocked up in cardboard. So I mean, this is clearly very early, but but like you wanted to get the animation and the mechanical part of it kind of locked in before you committed to uh, you know months and months of of work. So. Yeah. For those of you, especially if you're new and you're getting into this, mocking everything up in a, in a cheap material like cardboard, do it. It's awesome. Yeah, it, it, it especially gave me a sense of kind of the size that I would need to build so I could nail the proportions. That's mm -hmm. one of the harder things to do with a larger creature build where you're trying to build the proportions. I didn't want to like get through the whole build and suddenly his I'm like, oh, his head is actually too small. Dang it. I need to redo it um, or anything like that. So nailing the proportions was important to me. Mm -hmm. Well, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> and again, that's I've just been showing the, the neck video. Those are all over on uh, the YouTube channel. We'll link all of this stuff later. Thank you, Michael. Good question. Let's move on here. Sam, and also I'd like to quickly point out that Hey Patch is here. Good to see you, buddy. Thanks for showing up about 15 minutes late. <laughs> 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 but if you have a question, Patch, go ahead and send that in. PunishProps.com slash live. <laughs> Sam has a question. Sam from BioCosplay, who was also at BlizzCon. He was a necromancer. Uh, let's see. He says, where do you buy the fur for your costumes? And what is an indicator of good quality fur? Hmm. Okay. Um, I bought the this particular fur, most of it from... Uh, fabric.com. I just ordered some samples till I found one that was good. Um, the the fur on his face actually is a different fur. It's it's from NFT. That's National Fiber Technology. They're the only company in the world that makes a fur with a stretch backing on it. Um, so I I they have a outlet store for their surplus things called Harry Man's Closet, <laughs> and it's it's spelt different um there's like two ends in it and it's like hairy as in like fur hair um i it's it's hard to google search for i wouldn't recommend it just <laughs> <laughs> search for nft on twitter or something to find the link i've got uh, uh, nftech.com national yeah. fiber technologies i think they have a link to their store but they have like their clearance section of overstock there so you can yep. get it for cheaper. They sell it by the square foot because it's so expensive. So for about like $30, I got a square foot to put on his face. I mm. like it because since it has that stretch back, I could just like lay it down and glue and stretch it into all these complex contours of his face. Mm -hmm. And it really sped things up. I didn't want to have to like sew the backing. Yeah, up. the stretch back is pretty bonkers. Um, I just went over to their products area. They have sample packs. There is an animal sample pack, basic mode acrylic sample pack. I don't know what that means. Creature sample pack. <laughs> the uh, taxidermy lion's mane sample pack. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Like they they do custom orders and they're really nice. You can like talk to them. Hollywood uses them all the time, like custom orders. Um, I think the minimum is eight square feet that you have to buy. Oh my. Um, but for a custom order, that could be like sixty dollars plus for a mm -hmm. square foot. So yeah, um, it gets pricey. Um, uh, Evil Ted is in the chat, and he's pointing out they use that fur for the movie Underworld. So for I'm you're sure making a they lichen? use it. I'm sure they use it on pretty much every movie monster oh, yeah. ever. <laughs> um, Brittany found the correct link. It's Harry Man's Closet. We will provide a link for you to click. Click. Link. promise that it's legit 
Um, but this is the, they've got uh, new styles. They have uh, fantastic styles. Of course they do. Yeah. And uh, different colors. There's all kinds of stuff there. Yeah, the stuff that's like six and eight, ten inches long is really fantastic too. Oh, yeah. Uh, but for this stuff, the, the rest of the stuff on his head, like right here, I got that from fabric.com. Mm -hmm. There's also things like distinctive fabrics or Mendel's or there's a place called CR Crafts that is a teddy bear supply shop that has some really high quality things. Any search for any mohair. Um, usually with fur, when you're looking at backing or when you're looking at quality, if you can like um, try to peel back the fibers, if you have a hard time seeing the backing from the front, that's a good quality. Okay. Um, feel the backing. Like, um, if it feels like it's just going to unravel on you really quick, uh, that's not good quality. Like a good solid knit backing is, is a good quality. Um, I personally like the furs that have a sort of gradient to them. They're not one solid color. They have like a darker base and lighter tips. So anything tipped, they're more expensive, but they are more natural. Um, and so... That, that's kind of the, the basic things. There's, there's furs that look more synthetic um, and furs that look more natural just based on their texture. Like some of the softer, smoother luxury shag is what it's called. Is mm. it, it, it looks and feels nice, but it looks a little more synthetic, not as natural because it's a really shiny fiber and it's all a solid color usually. Um, Usually to get more natural, you want a little bit more of a rough or crinkled uh, texture, which you can do by applying a little heat by, mm -hmm. and steam. But So the, the, those are some of the things I think about when thinking about fur. You don't want to rush that kind of commitment either. <laughs> right. It's expensive. You can always order samples. Yeah. Always order samples before you go and uh, dye lots. If you're really particular about the color, different dye lots will be... Uh, will we'll change the color slightly. So always order a sample before you buy. Very good. That is uh, really great advice. Thank you, Sam, for the question. I'm curious, Sam, why you're asking questions about fur. What are you making, buddy? Hmm? <laughs> Let's grab another one. This is from Shed Quarter Creation. I'll be attempting to make a larger-than-life Tekaman blade uh, looking like a large Gundam type character. Okay. <laughs> Making it out of foam. I was wondering the best way to pattern from a toy figure. Ooh. Oh. Okay. So this is this is something that I've done a lot. I've done it since my Goran build, the big orange blocky thing. I have like um, I'll show this. I have this little figure of hogger that I built. This was mostly to get the proportions, mm -hmm. but I've also done a lot of pulling patterns from miniature. Actually, hogger's face, in fact, was pulled from a little quarter scale miniature version of it that I sculpted out of clay to get the basic shape of his head. Um, so when you do it, the most important thing is like considering scale. So if you have access to get your body scanned, or if you know modeling software enough to like model a basic low poly version of yourself um, and print that out at one six scale, it'll, it'll be about this big. Um, if you can print it out at that scale, then you can just take clay and put it all over it and then do tape. Actually, Tested has a really great video on YouTube with their Raincore build. I just it, found that video. I was going to show everyone. Keep going. That That's exactly the process I went through. Um, like, you, you take those little pieces of tape and you scan them into your computer and blow them up by 600%. So that's why the scale is important. Mm -hmm. um, if you could do it at quarter scale, then 400%, so on and so forth. Um, and then you you have like the full scale. Of course, there'll be a little differences that that come up um, because of the thickness of the foam is thicker than a piece of paper or a piece of tape um, that you'll just have to account for when you're building. But I mean, it's it's close enough. It's close enough that it's a really solid.
space to build from. Yeah, yeah. If you want more information on how to do the patterning from a scale miniature version, uh, Stan Winston School, Ooh. they have, um, they're, they're building a foam T-Rex course. Uh, Ted Haynes goes through the same process. He actually uses fabric to pattern his instead of tape. Um, and trying, I've, I've tried both. The tape makes more sense to me personally. So you can try them and and figure out which one is better for you. Um, but yes, Stan Winston School is amazing. And I've been subscribed to there for forever. And I just love watching every single one of their videos. Did they use a projector to blow their thing up? Looks like Yes, it. Yeah. they did. I actually, um, I was at Goodwill um, like a month ago. And I saw, you know those overhead projectors you would have at, like, in school to, like, yep. teach would around? I found one of those for, like, 20 bucks. I bought it. Which, my, my husband just found me one at Surplus. If you have any state schools near you, they usually have a Surplus store where they sell off all their old stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten, like, giant uh, whiteboards and giant cork boards and projectors and things from them. It's, it's fantastic. Really cheap. I got mine for five bucks. That's great. I did, so, um, I haven't done anything with mine yet. I'm sure it'll be in a video at some point, but I'll give you an example of something you could use that for. This is just a toy. I have, of course, because I have my action figures. I have Nova right here next to my desk. Nice. And then I've actually already built this gun, <laughs> but uh, she has the ghost rifle, and I just laid this down on the projector, and it projected a profile shape of it on the wall. <laughs> And I could move the projector closer or further away from the wall to enlarge it or until. Yeah. And then I just put my hand on the wall and I was like, that looks about right. And then yeah. if I had paper, I could just trace it. And there's an appropriately scaled outline for my prop. Right. So doing it that way with the projector isn't quite as precise. Mm -hmm. And you probably need it a little more precise than that for an actual something you're aware. You could probably get away with it um, just if, if you like measure a particular piece like it should be this tall on my head and like use that measurement on your projection mm -hmm. yeah um, either way if you can get your hands on one of those projectors they're they're sweet or, or or like draw like a little thing like this this little mark should be an inch when it's blown up oh, kind, yeah. of, kind of deal to to get the scale appropriate good idea uh thank you that question came to us from shed Quarter creation. Good luck with your Tekaman blade. That's going to be an ambitious project. And uh, when, not if, but when you finish it, let us know. We want to see it. I'm counting on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Next one comes to us from Star Wolf Studios. Have you thought about making a costume of Warwick from League of Legends? Oh. I actually got this a lot. Like when I was building Hoggard, so many people were like, oh, it's like that that uh, Mad Max Warwick skin, the hyena version of him. Um, yeah, um, I'm just looking it up right now so everyone can see this is what we're going for. There you go. Right. And um, I, I, I've thought about it. I don't actually play League of Legends, so I don't know how enthusiastic I would be about that build. It's a really cool looking character. I just am not attached to it as, as much as others that I could start building. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I would approach it in a little bit different way than Hogger even, like maybe not do the puppet head. But I, I, would, I would try to approach it in a different way. Um, yeah, it looks like um, he doesn't have his, that elongated neck the same way that yeah, Hogger does. He doesn't have like a hunch. So I might do it kind of, if, if you know uh, Pumpkinhead, that mm -hmm. monster, uh, his head, the the... The head actually sticks out at this angle, so the face is facing that way, and the car the act the performer is looking down. So, um, I would might do that, have his head oriented out that way, so you could really get that hunch, but the neck would still be elongated, and his face could look out that way and scare all the people. <laughs> That's how I would do it. I don't think I ever watched Pumpkin Head. Why is it? His head doesn't look like a pumpkin. It just looks like a gross monster. <laughs> There's some cool behind the scenes stuff from. Stan Winston School on oh. Pumpkinhead, and it's a really neat monster build. 
I love all those movie monsters. <laughs> I don't doubt it. A lot of jack-o'-lanterns when you look up Pumpkinhead. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you, Star Wolf Studios. Let's keep moving. Another one from Brittany here, Lady Longshanks. She says, did you get any funny looks when you were crafting on your commute? Yes. Um, so I, I, when I had a job, I kind of got laid off recently, oh. but when I had a job, I commuted by train into work and I would oftentimes bring little pieces of hogger to work with me and other costumes. Um, and sometimes a lot of people would get brave and ask me like, what is that? <laughs> what are you working on? <laughs> Luckily, BlizzCon is kind of close to Halloween-ish, mm -hmm. so... I would just tell people, oh, it's just a Halloween costume. Um, most of the time, people would just kind of like try to look, but look like they're not looking. Yeah. So they don't have to talk to you on the train. <laughs> but I know they were really curious, but I just like kept working and, and kind of giggled on the inside that they were being so awkward about it. I like to think you're just sitting there sculpting or whatever and just daring people. I dare you. Yeah, go ahead and ask. Yeah. Well, one time, like, just to show my coworkers, I took the finished head of Hogger on the train, and he was, like, just sitting there right on the table in the train, and people kept, like, looking and double-taking as they passed, but nobody said anything. That was the craziest experience. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that wasn't the weirdest thing they saw that day. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe they thought it was my service dog. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You can't ask questions about that. No. Uh, thanks, Brittany. Good question. And those of you watching live, if you have any questions, go ahead and send them in over at punishedprops.com slash live. There's a little form there you can fill out with your question, and we'll hop on it. Speaking of Hey Patch, who I was harassing earlier, he's got a question. He says, for someone who might be getting an ANET A8 3D printer for Christmas, uh, is there are there any tips that... Um, wait, sorry. What advice would you give someone with no 3D modeling experience? There we go. That's a good. That's a good question. Do mm. you, do you do uh, much? Because I don't know that I've seen you do much 3D printing. Do you? Um, I have a 3D printer. Yes. Um, and I have done a little bit. Okay. I usually uh, use it in prototyping more. Like I have a one six scale version of myself that I modeled and printed out. Mm -hmm. Um, for modeling, because that's that's a really tough thing to learn. Yeah. It's got like a crazy learning curve. Um, I, I luckily had school to to learn all those things in. Um, my advice is take an online class, maybe like Lynda.com has some good ones, and I'll give you a good foundation and how to use your chosen 3D software. Um, it just takes practice. <laughs> um, some of the early things that I built, like one of my assignments was build a teacup, then build a Lego man, then like like doing those kind of things, just dinking around in the software, trying to figure it out. Which, uh, uh, which software was that that you were starting with? I, I learned 3D Maya, yep. which That's... now I don't have access to again. <laughs> and it's kind of expensive, so... Yeah, that's what I learned on. Hooray! <laughs> right, so I may be trying to learn... Oh, what's the free one? I would, rec like... I would recommend um, jumping into uh, Fusion 360, which you can get for free. Okay. It's awesome. Uh, it's more CAD-based. It's not really polygons. But if you're making space guns, like I do, it's pretty awesome. And then they have a sculpt mode that's a little bit more like... Kind of like subdivisions a little bit. Worth checking out, and hey, Patch, if you're going to dive in, uh, you can just go to Fusion 360's website, and they have a bunch of videos that'll help you get started. Also, I made, uh, is it behind me? It's over there. I made the um, Thirst Zapper, and I 3D modeled it, and I've, and I've recorded every last minute of that 3D modeling. So if you got a spare five hours, just go watch that video. <laughs> follow along <laughs> right um and i've also tried out like uh sculpting softwares like sculptress mm -hmm. and zbrush like i could never i need to just give them more time i had a hard time with it i much preferred traditional sculpting 
than the 3D sculpting. So I've been doing a lot of that. And you know, for, for my job, I was on, in Maya all day, every day. So I didn't want to do that when I got home, but yeah. now things might change and I might just get back into it because I'll miss it. Uh, where, where, so what was your formal um, training then? Like where would you, did you go to school and what was the actual program? Um, it was it was 3D animation. Yeah. Um, in school, I kind of specialized more in modeling. I was the modeling lead on my senior project. Mm -hmm. Then, um, when I got a job, I got a, a job at a smaller studio in Salt Lake at a video game studio. And since it was smaller, I could have my hands in the whole entire pipeline. My title was 3D animator, mm -hmm. and that was my main job. But I also got to model and rig and texture and render everything too so i was kind of like 3d general artist yeah it was really interesting when i was in school doing i did very similar things um that we learned a little bit of everything and became kind of generalists at modeling and texturing and rigging and animating and rendering and uh get out of school and people are like well we need a renderer and i was like well i'm okay at that do you need someone that can kind of do everything and they were like no <laughs> We need to, we need someone who can render. I was like, ah. I was very lucky to find yeah. the studio that I was at. It was, it was a great place to work. Um, was any chance was that was that at the University of Utah? I was at Brigham Young University. Okay, I have a friend who works at the University of Utah, so I yeah. had to ask. <laughs> uh, good luck, Hey Patch. Dive in. You're gonna have fun. He's in the chat right now. He says, "I always have a spare five hours for your videos." All right. <laughs> To be fair too, hey Patch, just throwing this out there. I believe I have watched every single one of your videos. Have you not watched all of mine? <laughs> it's not really it's not really fair. He has far fewer videos than I do. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Uh, Cleo Naturin wants to know when it comes to testing a print, is it best to print on a high end printer or do the test print on the cheap 3D printer and then move on to the other printer? Hmm, I guess it really depends on what you have access to. Because you can print lower resolution on a high-end printer to, for speed, right? What I tend to do is, um, most of the stuff I end up printing is mechanical. Uh, and I'll print a small part of it to see if it fits. Like when we were doing all the stuff for Probius. All the 3D printing I did on that were, were mechanical connections for getting pieces to stay together. So I would print a, like a cross section of a piece that would just like take 20 minutes to print and then see if it fit together with the thing it needed to fit together before I committed to the full like three hour print. That's, I realize me, me showing my hands do this doesn't really do a lot to illustrate it. But usually I just print a small portion of it to see how it looks and then go from there. And you were saying um, like you printed a, a scale figure of yourself like, yeah. it doesn't really matter the, the how good that final print looks so long as it's passable right yeah and i have a really cheap low quality 3d printer anyways so yeah um so yeah just whatever printer you got will work just fine just use yep. that use that one <laughs> use what you got next one uh let's see oh that was cleo naturin next one is for again from hay patch uh, do you have any tips for making the skeleton in frames for your large creature costumes? Ooh. Yes. Keep it as light as you can. Yeah. <laughs> um, like on, on Hogger, I really, really needed it to be lightweight because his neck was a puppet and my arm, I'm not super strong. So it needed to just be as light as possible. Plus, I, I have kind of a bad back and scoliosis so I didn't want it to be weighing on me and making me uncomfortable. I know at BlizzCon that I'm wearing the costume for an entire day and I don't want to be dead after that. Yeah. Um, so actually for Hogger specifically I had a friend like teach me about aluminum so little strips of aluminum I was able to build a skeletal frame uh, this is on its neck. Yeah, I have the neck video up right now. I see aluminum, and then is that like plastic? Um, it's corset boning. Corset boning. Very good. Yes. And, and 
And like corset boning is a fantastic material. It's super lightweight and it's meant, it meant it's like holds its shape pretty darn well. And I've actually um, learned a lot since I built that neck structure about how to do corset boning. So I'd recommend looking up how to make hoop skirts and how to make lobster tail hoop skirts. Oh, wow. Um, like just the way that they use the corset boning and create these complex cage structures to add volume to their skirts is like, it has a lot of really great applications that you can use in your creature builds if you need bulk, like a hump mm -hmm. or even the leg padding. Like I want to experiment more into doing that where it just adds like this empty volume of thin corset boning. It's so lightweight and it retains a lot of flexibility too. That's cool. Uh, and if you go and watch Laura's video on the neck for Hogger, you'll see a lot more about how that all goes together. Uh, what did you do for the harness? It looks like from here that it's kind of, is, is that Warbler? <laughs> it is Warbler. <laughs> now I like Warbler because you can, you can create like hard plastic structures, just fabricate them like like nothing. So for for the frame and how to attach it to my body, I built like a little chest plate that had a little cup on the front that that the aluminum harness like fit right into. Mm -hmm. And then um, for the neck thing, I kind of built out like some pauldrons to extend my shoulders and a little hump thing on the back. That that was a piece from another costume of mine. Um, my Arakoa, my angry bird thing. Uh, so it, that was kind of a mishmash together. I, I learned a lot while doing it. But yeah, using Warbler, um, I really tried to concentrate uh, like, like backpacking skills where they focus all the weight, like wrapping it around your torso, wrapping it, resting it on your hips, that kind of thing. Um, just be mindful of where you distribute your weight while mm -hmm. you're building these big ones. And yeah. if, if you, like, like with Hogger, the reason I built his legs the way I did is because I wanted my foot flat on the ground, which is very important when you have a big top heavy character that you can't see very well in. Do you really want to be like precariously balanced on some stilts? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of just gets to be a recipe for disaster. So I like my feet firmly planted on the ground so that I have the most stability for those big builds. Yeah. A good tip as well is to not put any additional weight on your head if you can avoid it because your neck will get tired uh, a lot quicker than you think, even with just a couple extra pounds weighing you down. Yeah. Um, so if you can, if it can rest on your shoulders or like you were saying on your hips, um, and that the for that particular one was the the chest piece all entirely made from scratch, or did you build that on top of like athletic armor or anything like that? Well, I wore Under Armour underneath. Like I always wear Under Armour under all my costumes, but mm -hmm. yeah, that was built from scratch. Okay, I used yeah. like headliner foam on the inside to just kind of sort of pad it out. Yep, yep. If you are uh, looking to build something like that and you don't know where to start, you could either buy like shoulder pads for um for a sport sporting event i don't know i could i i'm gonna let you know right now i could not think of a the name of a sport in the moment football there we go football <laughs> <laughs> and either use that as your base or look at football padding or, or sport padding and base right. your design on on that yeah um, looking at, at anything like that like i said backpacking harnesses oh, yeah. are really good um, you can buy just the harness and there are, and, or just the frame and they're really lightweight. You can build off that or just base your designs on it. I buy like nylon webbing by big rolls and oh, I yeah. use for the strapping on all of me. So it was, everything on Hogger was, was uh, designed and built by me. I'm looking up football <clears throat> shoulder pads. Um, these look like space armor now. This is not what they looked like when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, moto cross uh, pads, uh, shoulder chest pads, chest protector. There we go. Yeah, motocross armor is really cool too, um, and they're designed to cinch down and be very tight and 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 uh, not tight, but but 
Um, secure. Yeah, very secure to your torso. And they've just got plastic pieces on them that you could probably glue things to or bolt things or rivet things straight to the, that plastic. Um, so again, and, and like this one here is like 50 bucks. That's really not that bad, especially if you're spending, what was that per square foot per square foot? What's that? Like $60 a square yeah. foot? <laughs> Suddenly a $50 chest protector doesn't seem all that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there you go. You could either either uh, build your own based on one of those or just buy one and stick stuff to it. Um, let's see. That came to us again from Hay Patch. Thank you very much. Um, next one, Sam has another one for us. He says, do you have any experience with or advice about digitigrade stilts? Sam, what are you making? <laughs> so so digitigrade, um, just so people know, digitigrade is is like with animals, their bones, they're actually walking on their toes, which are, you know, another name for your fingers is digits, right? Mm -hmm. So it's digit grade, they're actually on their toes. Humans and primates are called plantigrade because they're planting their entire foot oh, on the ground. I didn't know so, that. Um, so the digit grade refers to just the heel in the air, toes on the thing. Um, as far as digit grade stilts, Back to the conversation about my bad back and stuff and the, the weight distribution of large costumes, I actually haven't attempted any stilt work. Um, I'm actually kind of terrified to try it. Like I would be scared that I'd snap my ankle or injure myself. Um, so I like to keep my feet firmly on the ground. <laughs> um, if, if you're looking for that, I would go to Chaos Costumes uh, they are probably the leader in cosplay right now on digigrade stilts. They sell kits or finished stilts. They also do the fancy ones that are like the heels without the heel part of it. So if you wanted like a slim, feminine uh, digigrade look. Look at that. I got their uh, Etsy up right now. That is mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah, they, they, you can buy just the plans and you can build it yourself, or you can buy like a kit, and they'll give you all the pieces, and you assemble it yourself. That's awesome. Man, I love the internet. They, they have a really good design, and it looks like it's pretty fairly easy to walk around in. Um, if you're looking to spend a bunch of money, Weta Digilegs, they're like a couple grand, three to $6,000 for a set. Those ones are really engineered um, to be really lightweight and strong, um, and they'll take your measurements and and uh, work with that. Um, it's it's just tricky. Be careful with it. Don't hurt yourself. Don't strain your back. Uh, that, that is uh, digilegs.com. Digilegs. That's what it is. And I believe that those were designed by our friend Kim. Kim beaten yeah, so yeah. i got a video up right now for walking around with those those are crazy like crazy crazy pants let there another thing yeah. like one thing that i don't really like about those kind of legs is that it makes your legs super duper long mm -hmm. so if you want your proportions to look correct you would have to elongate your arms and elongate your the upwards to get the proportions right otherwise you just look like you have freakishly long legs so just be mindful of that while you're designing Oops. sorry i just played a video and it was really loud <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it all depends on the proportions um anyway we'll have links to all that stuff in the in the show notes here digilegs.com so th there's nothing wrong with digigrade stilts it's just like i'm not that interested in trying them yeah. it just makes it a higher place to fall from yeah. And again, Sam, what are you making? <laughs> Thanks for the question, buddy. Let's keep going here. Uh, Gills has a question. Working with an articulated jaw and a foam base. I am struggling. I guess he's trying to do something similar to your um, your hogger mouth. Any advice? My first attempt turned out uh, to not be very, very sensitive or sturdy. The mouth just kind of hangs open. Okay. So... 
doing moving jaws when it's a head built on your own head is one of the trickiest things to do in this type of costuming. Um, and especially on a foam head, that's why you see a lot of moving jaws on resin bases of heads. Some tricks you can use to do the foam jaw is make sure that the foam itself is floating on your jaw, like cut it and disconnect it from all the other jaw on your head. Also, there's a way that you can do the elastic. If you do the elastic, like one piece of elastic that goes around your chin, up around the back of your head, and and then do another elastic around here just to keep it in place. Like if that like fits your head perfectly, glue that um, piece of foam from your chin on on that piece of elastic. That'll help you. Um, I'm trying to think of who has a tutorial on that, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, but also make your bottom jaw out of maybe like a stiffer foam, like EVA instead of upholstery, if that's mm -hmm. what you're using. The movement will translate better if it's stiff and not squishy. Yeah, I wondered too if you could if you could like um, reinforce it with like uh, coat hanger wire or something like that, just to keep it yeah. more rigid. Yo. That would be an idea. Because it's going to be fighting against that elastic, and it will deform. That's definitely something I think would uh, benefit from very rough and early prototyping. If you can get the motion just... down, yeah, <laughs> before you end up sculpting all the detail on top of it, um, you're probably going to appreciate that a lot more. Um, I know a lot of, there, there are a lot of specific costume problems. Or, or, um, I'll give you an example, not a jaw thing, but if I wanted to be Tyrael from Diablo 3, let's say, who wouldn't want to be Tyrael? The wing thing with him is going to be challenging getting the flowy tentacle looking wing things that he has that are glowing. So I would try and tackle that first with a bunch of prototypes as a proof of concept. And if I couldn't get it the way I wanted to, I would, I probably just wouldn't build that costume. <laughs> I'd move on, do something different. Um, right. Same thing with any other like mechanically or technically, like if you have wings, they need to open and close build the wing skeleton first make it easy to alter and change it as you're building your prototype um, you may have to rebuild it again once you get it all figured out but that's the cost of a prototype um, but do that first <laughs> don't build the whole costume and then be like time to tackle those wings <laughs> yeah um, just re on the subject of rebuilding things like i rebuilt hogger's neck structure mm -hmm. like including the, the cardboard prototype, I probably rebuilt that five or six times. Oh yeah. So that definitely took a lot. Um, also advice, don't be afraid to try something that you've never seen before. Like if, if you have an idea and you're like, huh, I wonder if that'll work, just test it out. Like that's how I came to the conclusion with the legs on Hogger like I did. Like I've never seen any other costume that does it quite like that. Mm -hmm. I just had the idea kind of inspired by those walking by dinosaur big costumes like the leg on there and i just like scaled it down let's see um someone in the chat's pointing out crooked feather does really good mechanical wings that's correct right yeah i lo also love seeing that um there are these things that pop up like wings are a very specific um challenge for cosplayers and that people like the crooked feather have taken like taken up the mantle of wing person and said we will solve that problem for cosplay and now they're like the go-to place to go uh check out just crazy awesome wings Man. yeah um and articulated jaws like go look up some fursuit tutorials there's lots of furries who have tackled that problem and mm -hmm. they've got it down to a science so perfect and and even even though they have it down like it's notoriously tricky to get those working correctly, yeah. especially on all foam heads. Um, all right, cool. Thank you, Gills, for the question. Thank you, everyone else who sent them in. I think that that just about does it. So thank you, Laura, for hanging out with us for the last hour. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I really appreciated you inviting me on. Absolutely. It was our honor. For those of you who haven't gone and followed everything that 
Laura is working on, then head on over to Facebook, look up Kaz Play, give her a like over there. But I really think you ought to go to her YouTube channel. I think she needs way more subscribers. And you guys should be there because you are you done with the hogger ones or there, is there more coming? No, see, I wanted to do like a particular tutorial on how I did his lips, oh. how I did his nose, how I got his floppy little ears. All right. Uh, the texture his eyes i have a whole bunch more plans good good because so, not done then everyone needs to go subscribe to her on youtube watch all the hogger videos and everything else and uh share them and enjoy them i am personally looking forward to seeing how you did his face uh, it's very exciting yes so. thank you <laughs> thanks everyone again for hanging out with us uh for bringing your questions your awesome questions bring the content for this show that's why we keep doing it uh, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for hanging out, and we will see you next week, I'm pretty sure, for another... No, wait. Maybe not next week. I might be out of town. So don't hold me to that. But we'll see you soon for another exciting edition of Prop Life Q&A. Bye, guys! And...